here. Anytime I talk about spirit guide communication, angel communication, and now I'm going to put me, I'm going to, I've been afraid to do this topic, this mediumship topic, because that church thing, because I'm afraid of the judgment that uh, I don't want to admit that I can hear the dead speak or spirit speak. Um, I mean, because I don't want to, because I remember the church, they really went hard on necromancy proclaiming to speak to the dead. And so I've had this topic for a while, but I've been, I've been holding back, you, you know, I've been blocked. Of? You're afraid that the church will find out or Christians will judge you or what? It's, I just feel like, yeah, I just, I think it's the belief system still, a misaligned belief, basically. Yeah. I still have a misaligned belief that I, I need to. I think the only way to conquer it is to stand up there and talk about do it. it. And so maybe I'll do that this week. Do you so talk, let's put that do, do you talk to the dead? Huh? Do you talk to the dead? I have. I have. Didn't you didn't you hear me talking to Naya about it? Um no. Oh yeah, yesterday um the, the oh maybe that's when you walked away, uh I, when you went to the shower or something. Um yeah, my ex Boy, the guy I just got through dating, his brother came to me. He was he died, committed suicide oh, when he was yeah. twenty three. Also, when I first had my awakening, my goddaughter, her mom died, my daughter's best friend. And this is when it this is when it first first happened. Um I um so she had her funeral and I couldn't make it to the funeral. I just had the baby. Right. And so after she died, I kept feeling she was buried at the cemetery behind my house, the one I do to, to go to the willow tree. Okay. And every time I drove by the cemetery, I felt something pulling me, like, to go inside. And I was just like, no way. And I kept feeling her for her mother. I just kept feeling her. <clears throat> and I was just like, this is creepy. I'm not about to give in to this shit. That's what I was thinking, right? And so... Um, one night I was laying in my bed and it almost felt like she was hovering over me like and said, please take care of my daughter. And I'm like, no, and I'm thinking, no, 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 no. I don't hear that. I'm imagining this. Right. And so I was just like, God, I just was like, I'm getting scared. I don't know. I'm new. It's like I'm really spiritually new to awakening. So I'm not really deep into the spirit communication or I wasn't even into it. I still wasn't quite clear on spirit guides or higher self. Right. And so one day, my goddaughter, she was like, today's her birthday. It was either the birthday or the anniversary of her death, right? <clears throat> she asked me, she's away to college in San Diego. So she asked me, she says, can you go to the graveyard and try to, you know, and, and just meditate and try to connect for me for her birthday? And I was just like, okay, I'll do it, right? And so... Um, my, I had at this point, I had met this girl, the one. Remember, I told you, um, the governor Wildstar's wife. I met her on a channel. She's a psychic, and so I told her, I said, "Look, you know, I told her that I'm having this. I think the spirit is contacting me. I really don't know what to do." And she, so she says, she tells me some tips. She says that they talk to you in impulses and feelings, and, and, and you'll feel, you'll, you'll feel like an emotion. And and so she said, just, you know, go. So I go, my daughter. So it's a huge, this is a huge cemetery. It, it's one of the largest cemeteries I've ever seen. My goddaughter could not remember. Uh, she didn't know how to explain to me where what, where the gravestone was. She just gave me like the general area. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll find it. I'll just look at all the names, right? No, no, no. It was huge, right? And so I walked by. And first of all, when I first walked by, there's some there's a grave with fresh flower, with like fresh flowers and stuff like it was and it was still like it was buried already you know how the dirt there's no grass growing over it yet so you know it was really fresh the moment i walked by i felt the whole family energy like i knew that that ceremony had just happened that funeral and i felt like there's still their vibrational energy around that grave still i thought that was strange so i was looking for her grave and i couldn't find it in the area this was like the area she told me was next to the fallen next to the angels right and so i was in the angels section and I just, I couldn't, I, I didn't see it. And it was too big. I was like, I can't search this whole place, right? So, but while I'm over there, I hear a woman crying. It, it's like, it, like in my mind's ear, I hear a cry. And the cry was coming from, let's see, I was standing from my, my left direction. And I just kept hearing a cry. And I was, but I, I didn't pay any attention because like, it's so faint. It's so subtle. You know, you can miss this stuff when it comes to talking to a spirit. And so I called my daughter and she's like trying to walk me through. She's like, there should be a tree next to it there. And so I'm looking, but I was just like, I'm clueless. I can't find it. But when I started to get close to it, I all of a sudden started feeling fear and like kind of like wanting to shake. Like I started feeling scared. And I'm like, 
I'm, why am I feeling scared out of the blue? And I realized she said they talk to you in impulses and feelings and emotions like that, that fear. It basically, she was letting me know that I was getting close to the grave. And, and before you know it, it was two gravestones away, like her grave. And so I was just like, oh, my God. And so I said, I'm like, I found it. Right. And I, and I didn't realize that the whole cry was her. The, the, I didn't even, even realize that the fear was her until afterwards it all read, came together for me. And so I sat there at her graveyard. You know, I went in meditation style. I, you know, I lit some sage around. And um, and then I smoked the blunt. <laughs> and so <laughs> I smoked the blunt with her. <laughs> and so afterwards, I sat down and while I was meditating, I heard her say some things. Um, so what I heard her say, and I wasn't sure if it was me, kind of like you know, I knew my the goddaughter was suffering. You know, so I don't know if I can influence things just to give her, you know, to make her feel better. So I wasn't sure. So one of the messages, the messages that I got from her was like, okay, so this is how she died. She died. Um, uh, my my goddaughter was out in the backyard smoking weed for like she was outside for like smoking weed. I think for a couple of hours. I'm not sure. Her she died in the bed. They said it was a heart attack. But the thing is, she was dead for two hours when they found her. So she felt like it was her fault that she was out smoking weed, that if she had been in the house, that she could have called 911, this would have been okay, right? So I was thinking, like, you know, I was wondering, I hope this wasn't influencing it. And so her mom um, says to me, says that I feel really, she felt guilty. She felt really bad. I'm thinking... I don't believe at first I was like, I don't believe that. Why should she be feeling guilt? She's on the other side, you know, but she felt bad for some reason. And now I see now from what, what I learned from Nia, it's probably because she was feeling Sahara's guilt and emotions and that kept pulling her back. And so, um, so why she said that she said, look, she said she felt bad about it and she could have came back. Like she had a ch choice to go back into her body, but she said, I couldn't go back. Her life was, she said it was too too hard she was suffering she was like she went through a lot of hard stuff in her life is what she kind of explained now i knew she was an alcoholic already and i knew that she you know but i didn't she expressed that she just didn't she didn't want to go back but she felt bad that she had to leave her kids before she 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 said she chose to leave and that lets her know that this was her choice you know that it didn't have anything to do with her and she says also told me sahara was an empath like me and that i was going to need to help her to, you know because she was awakening too and and that I would have to help her through this. Like she basically absorbed all of these like these traumatic emotions from her mom and her dad, right? And she's in her, you know, which uh, yeah, she 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 got these traumatic emotions, and so she was kind of like, and she tell she said, "There's something that's eating my daughter up, like inside, like it's just eating her up," and she's like, she's suffering, and um, she didn't tell me exactly what it was that was eating her up. And so I went back and I told my God, I was just like, oh, God, I don't know about this stuff. Right. And I went and told her, she said, that sounds like my mom would say this. She was like, it sounded like she would say this. And I was just like, OK. And I felt like really great about it. I felt confident. I was like, OK, you know, this is a one time occurrence. I'm not about to be proclaiming to speak to the dead. I don't want to be a necromancer. And so after that, um, my friend introduced me to this woman online on Facebook. And she was just like um, she did like some past life regression stuff. And she walked me through like crossing people over. And at the same time, 100 percent, I don't kind of resonate with it 100 percent. But I said, I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to see how this, you know, what I want to know what she's going to show me. Right. So I, I did it with an open mind. But at the same time, part of me didn't really believe I was crossing people over. I don't even know if people need to be crossed over. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how these stories work out. And so she's like, OK, so this woman sat on the phone with me and would ask me questions like okay um she was like she's like we'll get uh, find out the name of a, the spirit that's there right now and i'm like um she says i'm gonna ask the question they're gonna give you the name you just tell me the first name that comes to your mind and i'm like okay and so i remember i was just like i can't remember the first name but i told her the name and so she's like do you she says she's asked she tells me do, do, do you know that you're dead and i'm like do you know that you're dead and i hear no and she's like, she tells me to ask, tell them that, you know, well, your family and loved ones are waiting for you on the other side. Would you like to cross over? 
at the in the angels or whatever are opening the door and so this one didn't want to go over at first and so she told me and now it it said like no it didn't want to go over right and so and i still didn't know if it was me you know mess yes and and so eventually um the you know she said to keep asking and finally went over so she had me go do a couple of crossovers right and then she had me meet my the two babies i lost the previous year and i told you guys that story about um i talked to them at, fr at first i was so sure that it was storm each time but like i talked to him i found out the first one was a girl the second one was a boy the second one knew that he would have been storm if he was born and the other one, the little girl, she knew her name was Blueberry only because I called her Blueberry because she was size of a blueberry when the baby passed away. And so, um, I, and so then I still wasn't completely buying it. I'm still thinking it was my imagination. And then she was just like, okay, pick, you want to pick somebody that you want to talk to? And I was just like, okay. I said, um, my grandmother, right? And so my grandmother died when I was in college, like around, nine, you know, around um, early 20s. And so she said she brings her. She, so my grandmother comes, I guess what, at, the, at the moment when she tells me, OK, she talks to her, do you know that you're dead? I started crying. I felt my grandmother. I can't explain it. I felt emotional. And she she was so <laughs> this is going to make me cry right now. <laughs> She said, she said to me, uh, when, I, when I went to foster care, like nobody in the family would take me in. And we had family in Texas. And um, she tried to get custody of me, but the county, the social worker wouldn't let me go to her because they said she was too old, her and my grandfather. And so, like, I, I had to go to foster care. And I had, like, family members in Texas, and nobody would take me. Um, she was she was worried about um so she, she said she was worried about me so she stayed around me this whole time to protect me and i was just like i, I felt the emotion i was just like okay maybe this is real okay and so um after that um she she had me cross her over and she said she said also she said i can recall her at any time if i wanted to like you just request to do that before you cross them over. And so I had crossed, she helped me cross her over. And I was just like, okay. So at that point, the emotions I felt, I felt the energy from the babies. And then I felt the energy from my grandmother. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, this stuff is real. I believed it, that it was real. So then she had me and I told her, I said, well, I want to meet my spirit guides, right? I want to meet a spirit guide is what I asked her. Not I was like, I really didn't call you to learn how to be a medium and, and to cross people over. I wanted to know about my spirit guides and about, you know, um, maybe like a past, I think it was a past life regression thing. So she had me call up another spirit. Okay. And so this spirit, she says, what is, so she did the talking and the, the answers came to me. She says, um, she says, what's your spirit? What's your name? So this one's her name was Angelica. And she says, Angelica, are you she's are you her spirit guide and she's like yes right and she's but she was like like kind of slowly like the answers that were coming to me she didn't seem very sure if she was my a spirit guide or not or and so it turned out angelica was so angelica um, was following me since i was a child since i was about five years old she attached to me and Angelica remembers me from a past life. I was her sister. Angelica, she says, how did you die, Angelica? And Angelica, I says, and I'm like, she's asking me how, she says, Angelica, how did you die? And I'm like, a fire. I'm like, I'm like a fire. And she's like, I said, I said, but it wasn't, I didn't, she didn't get burned. She, she it was smoke. She can't breathe. This is what she was saying. It was smoke inhalation. So she was saying her, her sister, she, she, she was attached to me in three different lives as a relative. Once I was her mother or she was like, and so in this life I was her sister and I trusted. So basically I, we were witches or something. And I trusted the wrong person and told them about my powers and abilities. And they burned me at the stake or lynched me or something. And then they came after her at the house. And I guess they threw torches in and she died of smoke inhalation. So she attached to me at the age of five years old. And at five years old, she um, she, she she said, what did you do to how, how do you how are you protecting Simone? Right. And she says, 
pushing people away. I've been pushing people away that she tries to get close to all her life, you know, basically. And I was just like, whoa, this is kind of deep. But still, I, I didn't believe it. I'm like, no, you know, is this my mind, like, trying to go along with the story and make it up? But it was just like, it's, she was just like, oh, my God. She was, like, overwhelmed about all, all the detail I got and everything. And so, like, that was, like, my first experiences. And then I told my daughter about it. I was just like, like oh, I was like, Summer, Elsa, it was so simple. I said, I cross people over. I can talk to the dad and blah, blah, blah. And so, like, I tried to show my daughter how to do it, right? And my daughter even, like, I heard it. Like, I, I still don't know if it's us making it up and everything, right? And so after that, I decided, I was just like, you know, I don't know about all this. So I said, I told my daughter, I said, I'm not sure I'm going to resonate with this mediumship. I don't know if I'm okay with talking to the dead or spirits. I mean, you know, they, they make it clear in the Bible, proclaiming the talk with the dead. It's like, I don't want to be a proclaiming, but like when I go back, even today, like I kind of forgot that story until talking about it. But when I go back, when I think about my grandmother and how she felt guilty and like, how would that have just come back up in my mind after all these years? I never would have known she felt guilty. You know, and so it's just like so that that would be my experience. And then we talked to tonight the other night. And I guess that's why I was asking about those mediaship abilities, because the next time it came up was with just, you know, with, with my ex, you know, his brother that passed away. Now, check this. OK, so you're, you're going to love this. <laughs> Maybe not love, but it's kind of tragic. Last uh, a week and a half ago, I had I was meditating and I had a vision. In a vision, there was a guy standing in front of me with a gun in his head, front of, in his head. He shot himself in the head, and the next thing, and, and I felt the blood spray on me, all over me. It felt so real. I was meditating, and I was just like, I even broke my meditation for a minute. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> and so, but the guy standing in front of me, he's like, I loved you, and I thought he said, I loved you, Simone, right? And then he shot me, right? And he shot himself in the head. And I just, he just, and I, I remember screaming and feeling like terrible. And so afterwards I was like, wow. And I, I kind of forgot about it, but then it came back to me and I'm like, wow. And the first thing I thought, I thought it was, there's this guy that um, I told you about, like after me and my ex broke up, I met this other guy. I didn't want to be in a relationship with him. He, he really, really likes me. Right. And he, he likes me so much. And I, I, I've been so afraid of hurting him because like, you know, you get to a point, you get lonely and you just want company. You want somebody to talk to. And I know how it is. If you want more with somebody, you know, you can hurt them. And I was thinking, God, you know, this is a sign. I can't play with his emotions. At first I thought it was a past life thing that I saw. And so on Monday, on New Year's Day, this the new year, uh, the, on January the 3rd, one of my daughter's friends, another one of my, all her friends are now calling me mom. So she comes to my house and she's like, I need to know. She's like, my friend just died. Um, he, she's like, one of my close friends, he died. I want to know if you can talk to him. And can I was just like, no. So now my shaman, I talked to my shaman. My shaman tells me, um, no, don't deal. With, you're not ready for that. You're not ready to deal with the spirits. You know, you can open up to entities. And she has me all scared now. She has me putting salt at the corner of my beds and shielding myself with a golden orb. And so I'm like, no, no, don't get me wrong. I was tempted to, to communicate with him a little bit. Not really, not right away. At first I was like, no, 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 right? Then she started to tell me he shot himself in the head. She said, no, she said he shot himself on accident. I said, wait a minute, what? He shot himself? She said, well, he said he was playing with a gun and it was an accident. And I said, wait a minute. I said, he shot himself. And I said, where did he get shot at? She was like, in his head. I said, wait a minute, this wasn't an accident. And she was like, no, 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 it was an accident. I said, where was he at when he got shot? She said he was in the bathroom. I said, first of all, you don't go into a bathroom with a loaded gun and pull the trigger and it's an accident. I'm just, I'm just, that's, I'm just being real. If you put your hand on the trigger, it is not an accident. If it's pointed towards your head in the bathroom, you're locked in the bathroom. This is not an accident, right? And I was just like, immediately, I felt it. I felt like that this was probably that, but I still think that it might be the sign not to play with this guy's emotions. And so at that point, I'm starting to get nervous, right? Because I feel, I'm feeling like an energy at this point, a, a foreign energy. So I give her salt now. Like, here, take this salt, put it on the four corners of your bed, right? And I tell her, so my shaman taught me how to talk to your gatekeeper to have them close your gate at night um, so that any uh, spirits will enter your dreams or your, you know, your thoughts. And so I told her about this and 
Um, I, that night, I put the salt on my bed, and I got so tired, I fell asleep. I never talked to the gatekeeper, right? And so the next thing you know, in my dream, I'm wrestling and screaming, and, and I can't remember the whole dream, but I felt like I was fighting with a spirit or something. And so I wake up, and I was just like, wait a minute. That's why I asked Naya that question. I was just like, you know, in church, they preached about evil spirits all the time, and I was constantly the one of the people always complaining, needing my house prayed for because he, he, evil spirits. And so after that, after I got awakened, I didn't I told myself I don't resonate and I never got bothered with evil spirits again. And now that my shaman has told me that I need to protect myself, now I'm getting bothered again. And that's how I realized once you decide that you have to protect yourself and you that they're going to happen. And so that like gave me complete freedom knowing that, look. You know, we are creator gods, okay? Nothing is going to bother me. And I'm not going to, I'm no longer going to use sock. I'm not going to protect my, because I don't have anything to protect myself from. I'm great. You know, nothing's going to bother me. And so, um, so yeah, so that is basically where I am with mediumship. I'm still really nervous about it. I know that once I go live with this, that is facing a great fear. You know, I guess it's the fear of thinking all the people are going to be like, hmm, yeah, she's into that that necromancy, that Eve, she has the evil, you know, that's what you're going to say. I have an evil spirit, you know, because that's going to make them feel better about me going public about everything that's going on, you know, about the, waking up out of religion and waking and the things that I went through there. They're going to need to make themselves feel better. Be like, Oh, she has evil spirit. She has necromancy. And you know, it just, just that whole biblical stuff is just taking so long for me to, to, to break my mind away from feeling like, like this is this is not right. But like every day it's getting better. Every day I'm breaking away from those belief systems, those misaligned belief systems. And I'm starting to see like this whole Bible stuff, like all these people that were writing, these people have we're on their own realities in their own timelines. There's no way we can take somebody else's life experiences or doctrines and really apply it to us when we're all living different timelines and realities. And so yeah, so that is my whole mediumship <laughs> so far. And I kept put, having that mediumship card pull, and I was like, no, I can't accept that. And she wanted to train me. You know, she was tra helping me train in shamanism. And one big part of shamanism is mediumship. It's like mediumship and healing. And so and even mediumship is not just talking to the dead. It's talking to your higher self. That's a spirit. Talking to your subconscious, that's the spirit. Talk, you know what I'm saying? Talking to your spirit, this all mediumship. And when you think about it, we're all spirit, you know? And so it, it helps me to get used to it. And just like learning that, you know, learning tonight or just realizing that, okay, look, I'm not. I'm not going to accept that evil entity stuff. I'm, I'm just not. That's that's useless. I don't have time for that. I just don't. <laughs> yeah. Did you record this? <laughs> I didn't record it. I should have. 